and welcome to this rather special, well I hope it will be rather special, communion service. Communion of course means community, means together, means sharing together. And today of course, we're not physically sharing together, but spiritually we are. For wherever you are, if you join in this service, get yourself a little bit of bread and some drink that we'll do for wine, you are sharing with us. For it is the whole heavenly host that gathers together to celebrate our Lord's sacrifice and what he has done for us. <coughs> and now we give thanks that you sent your life-giving Holy Spirit upon your church, <coughs> that by his glorious power and the joy of the everlasting gospel it might captivate the world and a new birth of holiness, a new understanding of truth, and a new unity and love possess all nations. The Spirit moves amongst us and gathers us in to celebrate at this time. Now I've got a confession to make. I was very heavily influenced by a minister I worked with a long time ago. And uh, one of the things that he had a bee in his bonnet about was the venerating of the uh, communion vessels. He hated it with a passion. So much so that every year at the Presbytery, when we had our first meeting and shared in communion, when everybody else stood as the elements were taken out, my minister would stay firmly sat where he was. Because he always said, it's the symbolism that's important, not the actual elements. Several years ago, the Church of Scotland decided to make an inventory of all the communion plate in all of the churches. And I remember Patrick Doby coming to uh, my charge down in the borders at that time. And he came in and uh, was looking in one of my country churches and they had the plate which was dated 1745. And I'm very proud of this silver. And he was saying, yeah, it's okay, and it's worth a certain amount, but it's not that unique, it's not that valuable. But as he walked out, he noticed a pewter plate that was stuck in a cupboard. And he said, oh, what's that? And he said, oh, we've got about half a dozen of them, and there's some flagons. Of and then he went into overdrive, because the pewter plate is very unusual, and it was very rare and it was worth about three, four times as much as the silver plate. But still the Kirk Session were very reluctant to allow me to use the pewter and not the silver at the next communion. But I have here some communion services. This one I'll tell you about. I was given this for free by a tradecraft salesman. The plate, nothing unusual about that, it was made in Thailand out of uh, palm trees. It's just a common garden with a plate. But this cup, this chalice, a brass bottom and a white coloured metal top. This came from Pakistan and it was built or made by a man who was obviously a very skilled tinsmith and metal worker. But he was an Afghan, and long before the West got involved in Afghanistan, he fled from Afghanistan when the Russians invaded. And he was taken over the mountains into Pakistan, where he was then told to go and work for this metal workshop. And it was then that he discovered the guy that was employing him had actually paid the, the uh, <coughs> people smugglers to bring him over. And before he could go anywhere else, he had to pay him back what he owed. And of course there was interest added. And there was no way the wages, the meagre wages he was being paid as a metal worker, were ever going to cover it. But what he started to do was at the end of the day, he would pick up the shavings 
of the metal and all the other stuff that they'd been using off, off the floor. And he would take it back to his home. And when he had enough, he would melt it down and rework it. And then he would resell the items. And one of the things that he used to make were these uh, flutes. And uh, I was given two of them. I was going to buy them from the chap on the trade craft store, but he said, no, so long as you tell the story whenever you use them, you can have them for free. And I've used them for home communions for a long time now, and I always tell the story. The one here, a small communion set, a small flagon for the wine, and a tiny holder for the bread. And I thought, in fact, there's a piece of bread in there. Goodness knows how long that's been there. But that was given to me by an old minister that uh, had retired to my parish. And uh, he had been an army padre. And this had been given to him when he had been commissioned as an army padre by his parents. And he'd carried it throughout the wars and all the conflicts that he'd been in. And then eventually he passed it on to me. Fortunately, I've never had to use it in a complex situation. I have used it once or twice in hospitals, because it's easy to take that in and to take the other stuff. It's very nice, very simple, and very straightforward. And whenever I've used it, I've always thought of the story of the Padre of Dunkirk. A Padre who was there doing what he could for the dying and for the wounded, with one of the last little boats about to leave the beach, he and a stretcher bearer, a medic, carried one of the last soldiers down from the dunes, down to the tideway, to put him on the small boat. And after they'd got the wounded man on, he turned back with the medic. And one of the sailors said, come on, Padre, we've got room for you. He just looked and shook his head. He said, no, I'm staying here with my parishioners. Take the young lad, he deserves a chance. So the medic got on on his place and he went back up to spend the next maybe five or six years in various prisoner of war camps, but he was with his people. He knew when he walked back up that beach that whatever was in the future, he had no idea what it would be. But he knew that that was what he was called to do that was what he must do. And finally, a couple of little flagons and a plate. And indeed later on you'll see the bread is in one of these plates as well. With rhinoceroses, lions, and I think there's a hippo on the other one as well. They come, not surprisingly, we hear surprised to hear from Malawi. I bought them when I was out there. And I bought them deliberately to use as communion sets. The flag had an elephant and, uh, and a hippo on that. Remember when Jesus shared that first, that first last supper? He didn't have had special vessels. When he handed round the bread, it would just be on an ordinary plate. Probably wouldn't. And when he picked up the chalice to share the wine, it wouldn't have been carefully crafted silver work. More than likely it would be an earthenware pot, or perhaps a wooden beaker. Because Jesus takes the ordinary things and makes them truly extraordinary. And he does that in no more than in the communion service. But he takes the ordinary things of life, the bread and the wine, and turns it there's something special and magical. I was going to put my robes on for this service, but we're recording this on the Thursday, and it's the hottest day of the year. So if you'll excuse me, we'll just make do with one of my Malawian stalls. And I'm sorry if the green clashes with my blue shirt, but we come to celebrate with our God. Pick up my hymn book. <coughs> Don't panic, I am not going to sing. 
but let us remember those words of the communion hymn by Gillard. You'll find it if you've got a hymn book handy at 694. The servant song. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. For we are pilgrims on a journey and companions on the road. And we are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you and speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping, and I will laugh when you are laughing, and I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen the journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony, born of all we've known together, in Christ's love and agony. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you and pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Amen. Let us draw near to this table. And as we do so, let us recall again the words that Paul wrote when he wrote to the church in Corinth and he was telling them about communion and about how to share it together. And he said, this I have received from, uh, sorry, it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23. I have received this from the Lord, what I have delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ on the night on which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. He then goes on, let a man examine himself, and so eat the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment upon himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we should not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are chastened so that we may not be condemned along with the world. You may well think at that point, we're not worthy. How can we possibly be worthy of this wonderful and great sacrifice? But Paul goes on. So then, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. And if one is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together to be condemned. About the other things, I will give directions when I come. Fortunately, when he did come, there was nobody taking shorthand notes. So we don't know what he said in person when he came. But Paul was conscious of the great mystery of this communion service. He said, don't take it lightly. We don't same time we do not make it such a big thing that it prevents us from being in communion with God because the whole purpose of it is that we can be in communion if only those who are righteous only those who are worthy could share in the communion and there would be nobody sharing in this communion today or any other day but we are made righteous and we are made worthy through the sacrifice that this meal celebrates. So I invite you to come together now 
and to share in our communion. So let God gather us in, wherever we are today, whether you're in the kitchen or the living room or even sitting outside, wherever you are watching this, we are gathered in. For we are the lost and the lonely, the broken and breaking, the tired and aching. We are the ones who long for the nourishment found in God's peace. We are the done and the doubting, the wishing and wondering, the puzzled and pondering. We are the ones who long for the company to be found in his feast. Gather us in then. We who are the bright and the bustling, the stirrers and shakers, the kind laughter makers. But we are also those who long for the deeper joys found in this feast. Gather us in, Lord. From corner or limelight, from mansion or campsite, from fears and obsession, from tears and depression, from untold excesses to treasured successes. Come, that we might meet and eat and be given a seat, to be joined to the vine, to be offered the new wine, that we may become like the least to be found in this feast. Above all, Lord, gather us in. So as we gather and we meet in the name of God, the creator of the universe and the source of all humanity, the mother and father of us all, we meet in the name of Jesus Christ. He who is the word made flesh, the saviour of all humanity and the lover of all. And we meet in the name of the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, the midwife of the new humanity, the inspirer of all. Come, eternal God, be present with us now wherever we are, and befriend us where we are, and renew us where we are. Let us pray. Heaven is here, and so is the earth, and the space is thin between them. Distances may divide, but Christ's promise unites and those bounded by time and those blessed by eternity. Let heaven be glad and let the whole earth cry glory, for heaven is here and earth, and the church above and below is one. Peter is here, and Paul, and Martha, and all of those Marys, Ninian and Andrew, Columba and Francis, Teresa and Luther King, the saints from far back, and those who left us not long ago, the ones that only sight prevents us from seeing. One with us on the other side. So let heaven be glad and let the whole earth cry glory. For heaven is here and earth, and the God who made them is present. The Lamb glorious on the throne. He sits beside us, the Spirit of God the Dove. And he makes our, her resting place among us. God inhales the breath of our prayers and spreads the table to our satisfaction. So let heaven be glad, and let the whole earth cry glory. And the blessing and honour and glory and power be to our God forever and evermore. Amen. So come now and prepare to share. Because Jesus was always the guest. In the homes of Peter and Jairus, Levi and Zacchaeus, Martha, Mary, Joanna, Susanna, and in each and every one of our homes, Jesus was always the guest. He sat at the meal tables of the wealthy and pled the case of the poor. He upset polite company, befriended isolated people. He welcomed the stranger. He was always the guest. But now, today, wherever we are, at his table, Christ is the host. And those who wish to serve him must first be served by him. Those who want to follow him must first be led by him. And those who would wash his feet must first 
make themselves clean. For this is the table where God intends us to be nourished. This is the table where Christ can make us anew. So come all of you, those of you who hunger and thirst for a deeper faith, for a better life, for a fairer world, for a world in which we can find hope, for a world in which we can find light beyond this pandemic. From all of that, Jesus Christ has sat at our tables and now invites us to be his guest. we do now is by the invitation of Jesus Christ and he invited his followers in every age to follow his example and command remember what I read a few moments ago that on the night in which he was betrayed as they were sitting at supper Jesus took a piece of bread and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying this is my body broken for you do this to remember me. So now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread, the produce of the earth, and human labor. For in this Jesus has promised to be present, and through Jesus Christ he can make us whole. So as we come to the Eucharist, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you praising all that is spectacular and all that is plain. For they all have their origin in you. And all that is lovely and all who are loving point to you as their fulfillment. And grateful as we are now for the world we know and the universe beyond our ken, we particularly praise you whom eternity cannot contain for coming to earth and entering our lives in Jesus Christ. Here too, with gratitude, rises the promise of the Holy Spirit, who even yet and even now confronts us with your claim and attracts us to your goodness. And so we gladly join our voices to sing the song of the church on earth and in heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and love, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. And now, lest we believe that our prayers is enough, we remember him who came because words were not enough. Merciful God, send now in your kindness your Holy Spirit to settle upon this bread here in this church and in all of the houses of all of the people who watch them. And let that same spirit rest upon us, converting us from the patterns of the passing world until we confirm to the shape of him whose food we now share. Amen. It had been a good meal. They had shared many a joke, many a tale of things that had gone on in the last few years, of adventures they'd had, of close scrapes that they'd had. Then the mood changed. Jesus spoke of betrayal and trial and suffering and death. And as his friends became somber and indeed became afraid, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body. It is broken. It is broken in you. Jesus, firstborn of Mary, have mercy upon us. Jesus, Saviour of the world, have mercy upon us. Jesus, Monarch of Heaven, grant us your peace. He whom the universe could not contain is present with us now in this bread. So take this bread and eat. For this 
is the gift of God for the people of God. Take, eat, and know that God is good. And later, after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup of wine. Pouring it out, he said, This cup is a new relationship with God. It's only made possible by my blood and by my death. So drink of it, all of you, and do so to remember me. In the bread and in the wine, Jesus has promised to be present, and through these, Jesus alone can make us whole. So, having taken the cup, he said, This is a new relationship with God, made possible through my death. Take it, all of you, and remember me. Wherever you are this morning, take your cup, your glass, your goggles, your flagon, whatever it is, take it and drink, and know that God is good. that the sins of many might be forgiven. Jesus Christ has nourished us and Jesus is our peace. Strangers and friends, those nearby you and those far away from you, those who are male and those who are female, those who are young and those who are old, Jesus has broken down the barriers between us all. And he binds us, each to him and each to one another. And this he does through the body that was broken for us and through the blood that was shed for us. We have tasted his goodness and now we can share in his peace. Through this day, and on and on, through all the days of our lives, and then beyond, when we pass through the veil of death, into the glories of heaven yet to come. For Jesus Christ will be there, waiting for us, for the consummation of his feast. Let us pray. Lord, our God, in gratitude, in deep, deep gratitude for this moment, for this meal, and for all those that we have shared it with today, those we can physically touch, and those who can only feel spiritually around us. For we know there is a great host of witnesses around us, smiling and sharing in our peace. But in our gratitude for all of those, we give ourselves to you. And we ask that now you take us out. That we live not as we were, but as we are now, a changed people. Because we have shared in the living bread. And so we cannot remain the same. Lord our God, ask much of us. Expect much of us. Enable much by us, we pray, and may many be encouraged through us. So, Lord, may we live to your glory, both as inhabitants of earth and citizens of the commonwealth of heaven, in whose presence now we come before you and say again the words that you taught us when you walked as man amongst us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. As I said at the start of the service, this service is being recorded on Thursday. You may not know that on Tuesday there was an election in Malawi. Now on Thursday afternoon the results are still not known. It's a very close one thing. I would ask if nothing has happened between now and Sunday. But if you can, of your charity, offer a prayer for the people of Malawi that they may accept the results, that the politicians and those in power may accept the result, whatever it is, and may accept it in a spirit of reconciliation and cooperation to go on to build that wonderful country to the nation and the place that it can and should be. Please, if you can, pray for the Lord. Christ's food is now in our souls. Our food is shared like his. Christ's life is in our hands. And our lives are shaped by his. Christ's love is in our hearts. And our love is warmed through his. Christ's peace upon our path. Our path following and go now in the love and the peace of God which surpasses all our understanding. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be upon us and among us, those whom we love and those whom we should, this day and forever.